Hi guys, happy Monday, welcome to the beginning of a new vlog. It's Monday, it's kind of late on Monday, it's kind of like late afternoon, you can probably tell from outside. Um, yeah, I've been filming some videos today, but I did get a little package. Okay, I already opened it and forgot, but let's pretend I didn't. <laughs> Gotta pose for that thumbnail, you know? Do I look shocked? Ooh, what could it be? Ooh. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. So, <laughs> I got two things. The first one I already told you about in last week's look, I think. And that's Wondersmith, The Calling of Morrigan Crow, a Nevermore book by Jessica Townsend. So this is a sequel to Nevermore. I bloody love Nevermore. I gave it a five star. It's a middle grade. And look how beautiful this is. Like, what? On the back it says, if you want to belong, you have to believe. So very cute. I love it. Ooh, lovely coloured end pages. Let's, oh, guys, look. I'm guessing that's the school that she's in, where she's going to learn how to be a wondersmith. Oh my god, this is beautiful. This has to be one of the most beautiful naked books out there, right? Like, this is stunning. So, I got myself wondersmith. I will be reading it probably this month. I kind of want to read it immediately, but I'm going to hold off and try and get some of these TBR books down. Um, but I also got graphic novel because... My graphic novel stores on my Wheel of TBR, I only have like the two, so I wanted to make, give me some self some more options. Okay, I don't know why I'm justifying it, I wanted it. So, I got Monstrous Volume 3. <laughs> this is by Marjorie Lou and Sina Takeda. I really, really like the series. If you haven't heard of this already, I think it's quite hyped on Booktube. Um, it's basically an Asian steampunk inspired high fantasy novel that's also dystopian but has gods and a main character who has a monster inside of her and makes her do bad things. It is adult as well. So we have uh, characters that are kind of like half animal, half human, lots of magic, and the art style is the most beautiful, like one of the most beautiful graphic novels series that I've read and that I own is monstrous. It was a toss up guys between this and the new saga, but I'm not ready for the new saga yet because I know April from April's Maximus, she read it in one of her vlogs and she said it broke her freaking heart and they've gone on a hiatus for like a year so we're not gonna get the next one after that for a while so I don't think I can deal with that devastation and then like not be able to have a finale uh, explanation in my hands right there and then the next volume you know so I ended up getting this one instead. <laughs> so today I have been just filming some videos and I'm now going to edit them, hopefully get one up today which is my wrap up. But these are the 12 books I picked from the Wheel of TBR, if you haven't seen that yet, link in description. And um, I'm not sure what I'm in the mood for. I know Tom Toplin, like a, like a, why can't I speak? I know another round of Tom Topple has been announced. Sam from Thoughts and Tomes uh, put it on Twitter. It's sometime this month, I'll put it on the screen. Um, but yeah, I think a bunch of these could definitely fit into Tom Topple because the whole point is to read books over 500 pages. So obviously I have The Way of Kings, part one and two, so I might read that for Tom Topple and then maybe another one. Um, but because obviously, if you've seen that video, you'll know, I picked one of Lala's favorite books for Lala Thon. That finishes on the 9th. Today's the 5th. Oh, it's bonfire night. Ooh, that could change my day. Is there any is there any fireworks anywhere? Anyway, tangent. So I'm probably gonna read The Kind Worth Killing first, so that I definitely read this during the Lalathon week. And this is a thriller. I have absolutely no idea what it's about, but I think like I th this is this could be completely off. But I think it's about two strangers who meet on a plane and discuss how they're gonna kill each other's that's the plot for Strangers on the Train, isn't it? Is this Strangers on the Train inspired? I don't know. I'll let you know though once I start reading it. But I think I'm going to pick this one up first. And then God knows when, uh, what I'm going to read after that. I am doing a buddy read though. I'm doing a buddy read of Wuthering Heights with a lovely lady by the name of Zoe. I will link her social media in the description. You can go check her out and say hi if you'd like. Um, so I'll be reading this. Well, I think the plan is we're going to read half of it this week and then half of it the following week. So I'll be picking this up at some point this week as well. Yeah, so I might go and see some fireworks later. Um, but first I'm going to try and edit these videos, get one up. Yep, I'll let you know. <laughs> Hello, so it's later in the day now. I've got my hat on, the scarf and my coziest coat. 
because I'm going to go meet my boyfriend at his work and then we're going to go to the one of the highest points in Edinburgh. Not half a seat because that's insane. <laughs> we're going to Calton Hill um, so we can see some of the firework displays. I can't seem to find anything about the Edinburgh Castle fireworks online so it's probably not happening but there is lots of different firework displays in Edinburgh so hopefully if we get there in time we'll see something. So my reading and my editing has kind of been put on the back burner a little bit <laughs> but I will do both of those things when I get home, hopefully. <laughs> guys happy Tuesday so last night the fireworks were kind of pitiful considering every year our end of festival fireworks at the castle are absolutely freaking amazing as shown here you'd think bonfire night that the fireworks would be awesome but apparently they were all cancelled so there was like a few kind of going off but I couldn't really get it all on camera I managed to get some but yeah wasn't the best and when I came home did I pick up this book did I fuck? But today, my anxiety levels are pretty fucking high, so if you've been here a while, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get myself out of the house, go read this in a cafe, possibly pop into some secondhand bookshops. Uh, yeah, that's my update for now. I'll, uh, if I've got any books to show you and some thoughts on this, I'll tell you when I get back. <laughs> and it's like 4pm so it's like pretty much pitch black outside already it's fucking with my head anyway I managed to find four books and the good ones. The first one I found was Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. I've been meaning to read this for so fucking long and I haven't been able to find it secondhand, but I did today and it's a beautiful copy as well. I'm a massive fan of George Orwell's 1984, so I know I'm gonna absolutely love this. It's a similar thing. It's a satire about a utopian world in which humans are bred and drugged to kind of conform to society. I think, I think it's about a world in which we're kind of completely controlled by the governing parties. Um, so I've been meaning to read it, read it for so long, as I said, so, so chuffed I found it. I don't know when I'm gonna get to it, but I really, really want to. I also found Eight Ghosts by the English Heritage Society. I almost bought this from Amazon. It's like reflecting my ring light. Uh, I almost bought this from Amazon last month to, well, was it last last week, wasn't it? Was it the week before? I don't know. I was gonna buy it from a heritage prompt for Witchathon, but I, I settled on reading uh, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. So I'm super happy I didn't buy it then because I found it. Like, it's perfect condition as well. It has really cool end pages and it's beautiful, naked, love me a matte black. Uh, yeah, so very, very happy I found it. This, if you weren't aware, is a collection of stories, ghost stories, from these different authors. I haven't read Mark Haddon. He wrote The Curious Case, no, The Curious Incident of the Night in the, the Dog in the Nighttime. That was such a hard title. <laughs> I've not read that yet, but I also haven't read Jeanette Winterson yet, but I do have one of her books, Orange is Not the Only Fruit. Uh, but I have read Sarah Perry, really liked it, and Andrew Michael Hurley, and I still haven't got Camilla, Sh I've still got Camilla Sham Sham Shamsie's Home Fire to read. So, some of these authors I want to get to, so there's be a nice introduction to them. And this is basically about just a bunch of ghost stories, as I mentioned. Uh, the English Heritage Society put all these authors up into a heritage spot overnight, and they wrote a horror story about their time there, inspired about, you know, their environment. So, super intrigued. Also intrigued to find out where the haunted spots are in the UK that these authors stayed at, because I love me kind of anything to do with spooky hauntings and ghost stories. So it'd be cool to find out. So super chuffed I found it. I also picked up a high fantasy that I've been meaning to try for a while and that's Trudy Canavan. And this is the Magician's Guild. It's number one in the Black Magician trilogy. I've heard good things about her books. I've never tried them though. And I can't say I'm a fantasy lover, can I? And not like try the more well-known adult series. If you have any more recommendations for me, do let me know. I know there's a few that I still haven't got to. I've only just started reading Robin Hobb. What's that about? Anyway, this one I believe is about a city that's being protected by magicians. Only a young girl manages to like hurt one of them. So she's a magician as well and she's loose. 
so we've got to find her. I'm not sure, I'm assuming there's lots of political intrigue and a good magic system and I'm here for it. Let me know if you've read this series. And lastly, I found a classic. I found this Penguin Classic Edition. I love them when they've got this kind of spine. I think this is the third one I have now. And it's Far From The Modding, Maddening Crowd by Thomas Hardy. I've never seen the movie, I've never read the book. I couldn't tell you what it's about, I just know it's a classic that I really want to read. I believe it's quite feminist because it says on the back here, vividly portraying the superstitions and traditions of a small rural community, Far From The Maddening Crowd shows the precarious position of a woman in a man's world. Yes, please. Um, let me know if you read Far From The Maddening Crowd. It's something I've been wanting to, you know, read for a very, very long time. So happy to have another classic to add to the, you know, TBR shelves as well. I think it might be a bit more interesting for my future TBR videos. Sorry, if you can hear noises in the background, my cats are running around and attacking each other. Love that. So, whilst I was out, oh guys, I had the best toasty. So, I always go to Costa and have a cup of tea and a toasty. And yeah, I got a penguin cake, which probably was for children, but I don't care, it was tasty. But I usually get a ham and cheese toasty because I'm nothing if not predictable. But they had this kind of, they had like a Christmas range and it was like turkey, bacon, stuffing, cranberry sauce. Oh, it was great. So I had that and I read some. So I got about 57 pages into this. I'm liking it so far. Very much inspired by Strangers on the Train from what I can tell so far. I like that it's two perspectives. We've got the perspective of Ted and Lily. And because this author chose to call him Ted and Lily, I can just picture Ted and Lily from How I Met Your Mother. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so far so good. Uh, it's just setting things up. Like I said, I'm only 50 pages in. Cats. Sorry, they just charged at me. Anyway, I need to go and do some editing now and I'm going to read some more of this this evening and I'll let you know how I get on with it. Hey guys, <clears throat> wow. Hey guys, it's Thursday and today I am hanging out with some friends so I need to go do that so I'm just going to give you a quick little wrap up of this book that I read yesterday so I finished it, very happy. And... It was like Strangers on the Train. It was at the beginning, but then you get about halfway through and there's a plot twist and it was great. I love it when there's an early plot twist and not you don't have to wait till like the last 100 pages, you know? So I really actually quite enjoyed it. I think I'm giving it a 3.5 though because we had this amazing plot twist in the, in the kind of middle section and the end felt a little bit underwhelming for me. It was quite funny. If you've read this, you'll know that the last little bit is quite hilarious, but... I just, I couldn't really connect with it that much. Yeah, it's a thriller, so you're not really supposed to. But these women, somehow the women in this book can just control men with their boobs. Like, I don't know, sometimes that can happen, but this was kind of ridiculous and overdramatic, but it was very, very fun. So I think I'm giving it a 3.5. I would recommend it. I'm always, wow, cattail. I'm always quite um, stingy with uh, star ratings when it comes to thrillers though. A thriller has to be really fucking surprising and shocking for me to give it a five star. That's just who I am. But yeah, it was quite good, 3.5. I also started on Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. So I'm only like two chapters in. So I need to read like half of this by the end of this week. Um, which I am hoping to do. So I'll read this when I come back from my friends. So yesterday, guys, I didn't vlog anything because I was just editing my last week's vlog. And I really don't like it. So I edited, edited it all yesterday and I thought, this is really shit. Like you could tell I wasn't feeling good last week. I had some bad mental health days and I didn't really film much. So the vlog's only like 17 minutes, which is short for me. And you can just tell I'm not feeling right. And I just, I'm not being all that coherent with my thoughts. It's just a bit of a shit vlog. Um, so I thought I'd, you know, sleep on it. Have a look at it this morning. I've looked at it this morning and I still feel the same way. I'm not proud of it. So I'm not going to put it up. Apologies. You guys deserve better. Hopefully this vlog is better already. Uh, yeah, so unfortunately that didn't go up. But I did put my um, wrap up up finally, which is good. So, yep, yeah, that's all I'm going to tell you today. I need to go meet my friends now because it's like already half past two and I said I'd meet them at half past two. They know, they know I'm like, I'm like this, honestly. I'm always the late friend. <laughs> so I'm going to pop out and then when I get home, I'm going to read some more Wuthering Heights and then possibly pick up another one, but I don't know what yet because 
Sam from Thoughts and Tones has put out, you know, the next round of Tom Topples, so I need to decide which of the books that are over 500 pages I'm going to read for those two weeks, because there's quite a few. <laughs> I'm so fucking nervous. Anyway, I need to stop babbling because my friends are waiting on me. See you later. Also, I almost completely forgot. Thank you for free K. How the hell could I forget? Yesterday, my channel hit over 3,000 subscribers, and it's still going, and... I'm kind of shook. Clearly a lot of people seem to like my Wheel of TBR videos, which is awesome. Oh my god, I can't quite believe it. I never thought I'd get this many, this much like support, I guess. So thank you so much. I best get going, eh? <laughs>
there's some relationships in here that are a little bit iffy. So yeah, a 3.75. I would recommend it because it's very interesting. And if you like kind of like The Handmaid's Tale and tales like that, like dystopians, 1984 kind of thing, you're probably going to like it but it wasn't the best. I felt like it was lacking. I can't 100% say why. It just was a little bit lacking. So as I said, like a 3.75, I think for this one, but I read it so very quickly, quickly. Um, yeah, I just like flew through this. It's very short paragraph, the language is fine. Interesting, just I was a little bit let down. I felt like it could have been done so much better, which is frustrating. I also made my way through about 12 chapters of Wuthering Heights. I have been listening to it on audiobook and kind of flipping between the two because I found it a lot easier and quicker to read it that way because some of the dialogue in this is quite tricky. Even though these characters are Northern and it's set in kind of like near the York Yorkshire Moors, um, I'm, I'm from Yorkshire but I still struggle with some of the language. Like I just couldn't quite get my tongue around it. Maybe I've just not been down to Yorkshire for a while. I have been, I have not visited my family in a while. They keep busy me up here. That's maybe why I just maybe need to be around Yorkshire people again, um, rather than the Scots. But yeah, um, yeah, it was quite difficult to get my head around some of this, not gonna lie. And it is a reread from me, but I haven't read it in about like eight years or something. So yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. I forgot just how bloody awful Catherine is. Um, but yeah, I'm about 12 chapters into this. I'm buddy reading it with Zoe and she's not quite where I am at yet. So I'm gonna pause on this for a little bit and pick up something else. Actually, I already did pick up something because I couldn't wait. So if you are here because of my Wheel of TBR videos or you've been here a while, you know, and if you saw that last video, that I did a poll for viewer pick. So I've been tallying up the votes, guys. Let me just show you in a better place. So the lighting might be a little bit better here. It's very, very cloudy today. Okay, so November Wheel of TBR viewer pick. Yes, as you can tell, just from looking at it, Caraval won, guys. I tallied the votes last night, um, just over the week. So if anyone voted after a week, that really didn't count. Um, but I did get a lot of choices, like this full two pages of different books. And then those ones as well. A lot of them, like, it's cool to see you guys have very different tastes or like some of your favourites are a little bit more obscure. Um, a lot of these just got the one vote. So the ones that definitely were in the running were Caravel and Thunderhead. It was kind of 50-50 throughout the week. But Caravel has 25 votes, whereas Thunderhead has 22. Also, Close Contenders, And I Darken by Kirsten White. Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor. Yes, Please by Amy Poehler. Actually, everyone seemed to want me to listen to the audio audiobook of it, so I definitely want to at some point. Uh, School for Good and Evil, A Man Called Uwe, My Lady Jane, The Nightingale. Um, yeah, uh, also A Monster Calls, very popular. So that was a really cool little experiment. Um, I know another booktube would probably do like a proper Excel sheet for this and it would be a lot neater, but that's not me. So last night I came to a close and I was like, okay, so Caraval has won. So as you'd expect, I ended up picking up Caraval. <laughs> So thank you to everyone who voted on that video and gave me your viewer pick or picks. I was trying my best to keep up with it, but obviously some comments I have not responded to yet, but I did tally them in time. Um, so very happy to see that Caraval won actually. I would have just as much have wanted to read Thunderhead, but this one has me very intrigued because even Chelsea said that she chose this one and she doesn't really do fantasy. So for her to choose Caraval, very intrigued. So I actually started this last night. I am at page 217. So I'm loving it so far. This is so magical. It's like the Night Circus meets Scythe. Well, not Scythe. The Night Circus kind of in a dystopian. Basically, it's all beautiful and whimsical and magical, but it's all very creepy and something's not right. Something feels off. Coraline, that's what it's like. Coraline meets... <laughs> Night Circus, I don't know. Anyway, I'm really, really enjoying it so far. I was kind of shook at the beginning because this is kind of darker than what I expected with these two sisters having an abusive father. Um, so we're following the perspective of Scarlet and her sister is named Donatella. They have been invited to Caraval, which is a magical game where you can win a wish and it's going to come true because it's magic. Um, but some stuff's not right, is it? Something's happening. Some, this isn't usual. Like, we know something's off so far. It's very, very foreshadowing and atmospheric, very creepy. But because Donatella and Scarlett have gone there with this boy named Julian, who was like a sailor, 
he seems very very dishy I uh, one of my predictions kind of come true but has it though I feel like this book is gonna veer off into we don't know basically what's tr what's real in this world a lot of it's fantasy a lot of it's real but just what is real I don't know I'm intrigued I read a big chunk of this last night I read like 200 pages because uh, yeah it's it's got me invested I am just full of questions that need answering and it's very very beautifully written as well and magical so I'm gonna stop rambling and I'm gonna go read some more of this and let you know my thoughts as I'm reading it today okay so update I'm at page 339 and you can't trust anybody in this story every bitch is someone else I'm really enjoying it. I don't think I mentioned before that um, the, one of the sisters, Donatella, had been kidnapped for the game. So the whole point of the game is to find her. Um, but we're just coming to kind of like a climactic scene. Um, but I've still got like a good 60 pages. So I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen. But it's cool. I'm liking it so far. Although I do have one criticism. <laughs> My one criticism. It was like a similar one that I had in Throne of Glass is... Why do we need full paragraph descriptions of what this bitch is wearing? I get that she's wearing a dress that can magically change. That's not a massive spoiler. And that reflects her emotions. That's cool. But, like, it happens a lot. Like, we, you can just say she's feeling worried and scared. You can just say she's feeling passionate. We don't need every time for a full-on paragraph about what she's wearing. And I love fashion as much as the next person. But, yeah, that's my only criticism so far. Also, like, not gonna lie, that wasn't my only criticism. I spoke too soon. Um, Scarlett is a little bit slow on the uptake sometimes, isn't she? Sometimes, like, stuff happens and it's like, this bitch is dumb. But anyway, I do like the story, so, so far so good. And I have no bloody idea where it's gonna go, so I'm gonna get back to it. Okay, so it's a little bit later now, and I'm at page 393, and I just snorted out loud because this was hilarious. Uh, massive spoilers if you've not read this book yet and you want to and you don't want to be spoiled go to this time I'll put it on the screen so that you're not spoiled but there's this bit like Scala is so dumb right okay so there's a bit right where Julian's talking about how he knows legend and he just happens to say but you cared so much about your sister it reminded me of the way I had always felt about my own brother <laughs> And then Justin's caramel eyes met Scarlet's as he finished, and suddenly a thought struck her. Legend is your brother? she asked. No shit, Sherlock. No shit. <laughs> a wry smile curved Julian's lips. I was hoping you'd figure it out. Like, I mean, you gave her a massive fucking clue there, pal. I don't know, that just made me really, really laugh. Still enjoying it, but some of this is a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> it is fun, though. Anyway, I've only got, like, I don't know how many chapters, like two or three chapters left, so... I'm going to finish this book and give you my final thoughts. <laughs> okay, so it turned out I only had the epilogue left to read after that chapter. And I finished it. And wow, okay, I want to read the next one. I'm not going to lie. I've also heard the next one's really, really good. Um, I enjoyed this, actually. The ending has me, like, very, very, very much intrigued, clearly. Um, I did have a few problems with it. I thought Scarlet was super, super dumb. <laughs> a little bit slow on the uptake. So it was kind of painful in parts, hearing her try to figure out these clues. Also, the clues all weren't all that clever. They were just a little bit too coincidental. Everything was just a little bit too easy, I felt. And everything just made sense a little bit. It wasn't, it wasn't all that clever. Not as clever as I would have liked it to be, but it was still very good. I very much enjoyed the world building, the mystery, the intrigue. I also really didn't like the relationship in the end, guys. Um, didn't that just feel a little bit false to you, a little bit off? I think there's more to that story in the next story, um, but I definitely would be carrying on. I think I'm giving it a four star. It wasn't my favourite just because it was, like I said, a little bit painful with Scarlett trying to figure out these clues, but I really enjoyed the relationship between the sisters, even though it was very far-fetched of a plan, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. I loved that you couldn't trust anybody. I'm, I've left this book and I still don't trust anybody. Even the characters that we've got to know and kind of love throughout the story, I'm still like, mmm, there's more, there's more to this, there's more to this. I need to get legendary now, don't I? I do. Because so many questions have still been unanswered. Some people got their comeuppance, which I enjoyed to see, um, to read about, but yeah. This was good, actually. I can see why a lot of people picked it. It was, it's not like anything I've read. I did say it was kind of like the Night Circus. Hell of a lot more atmospheric and creepy, in my opinion. 
and not as beautiful as that, but still this world, this place where this game is happening just is full of whimsy and trickery. It's all very trickstery, isn't it? Yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Come to think of it, it had its flaws, but it was a hell of a lot of fun. Four stars, four stars. Thank you to everyone who picked this one. I did very much enjoy it. And now you're the reason why I'm gonna have to spend some more money and get the sequel. It's on you, it's on you. <laughs> okay, so it's now around 2 p.m. So I managed to finish that book in a couple of hours. So not bad, not bad. So what am I gonna read next? Let me show you what I've still got left to read on the TBR. Okay, so this is where I keep my TBR books. So this stack here are all around 500 pages. So perfect for Tim Topple, which starts on Friday. So any of these could work, but that is too many to read in two weeks. So, I mean, it's all too many to read in bloody three weeks, isn't it? But anyway, these are the ones that aren't 500 pages. So we have Big Ship at the Edge of the Universe, Essex Serpent, Exit West, and Fahrenheit 451. And these are the ones I've read. So I just added Caraval. Well, I haven't read Wuthering Heights. I'm like part way into it, but I'm putting that on the back burner for now. I finished Vox and I finished The Kind of Killing, which is down there. So three and a half-ish down. These are the ones that are left. So I feel like I might leave these for a little bit later in the week, like start one of these tomorrow or something. So I'm going to choose one of the bigger ones. I think I'm going to go for some fantasy. I think I'm going to go for Kings of the Wild. Hey, so an update. It's a bit later now and I'm at page 52 of this book and I'm in love so far guys like this is so freaking good though it is a little bit confusing because we have so much mythology history magic systems and kind of magical creatures to kind of learn about in this book so far so I feel like a lot of it is foreshadowing for people or things we're going to meet in the future but if I didn't tell you what this is about it's about a guy named Clay Cooper who was in a very famous band of mercenaries they were the best of the best, they were the original heroes and they're kind of in retirement now, only one of them goes to visit Clay and says, look, I need your help, my daughter is in trouble, I've taught her to fight, her name is Rose, so the sequel now makes sense because that's called Bloody Rose and that's kind of her nickname because she's a badass but she's in some trouble so he's trying to get the band back together to go and save her so those two are just got together and they're on the way to go get another member of the band who i believe is a wizard honestly the magical creatures in here like i'm so excited i believe there's dragons there's also chimera there's ogres and golems and trolls and everything it's great so far i feel like there's been a few nods to other kind of fantasy stories such as game of thrones for example and there's just so much to learn so it's a little bit overwhelming i'm taking my time with it so i can take it all in because we're learning the history obviously at the beginning of this book there seems to be a few different religions and uh yeah hearing all the stories from back in the day the stuff that they did and now they're gonna have to kind of make the same journey through this like magical forest with lots of different dangerous creatures i'm loving this so far so i'm gonna get back to it like I said, probably going to be a five star. I'll see how much I can read. Like, I've not even told you how big this book is. It's pretty damn large. It's like 490 something pages. So I don't know if I can do this in like one day, but I'll give it a try. Like I said, I'm loving it so far, but it is a little bit slower just because there's so much to take in. <laughs> what's up so i managed to finish this last night and it was so good guys this was a five star prediction it definitely was a five star honestly this had so much going on i know it's like almost 500 pages but jesus christ any other series this would this book alone would have been like three books like they could have really drawn out this story and i'm so glad they didn't it was so fast paced and action packed the relationships between all these older men these friends for years it was just absolutely amazing to read from and I absolutely loved that there was just so many mythical creatures, um, magical monsters, anything you can think of from fantasy was probably mentioned in here, at least mentioned, if not did come up and we met certain characters. So many unlikely characters, the humour was amazing, nods to different fantasy series such as Lord of the Rings, probably some that went straight over my head, but I definitely need to read the next one now. Like, I really need to read Bloody Rose because I want to hear her story. I loved how this ended, but I hope it's not the end. 
of the band. Oh, it was so good, guys. Yes, the humour is sometimes really juvenile and silly, and there's like jokes about having erections, but I don't know. I found, I thought it was funny. I grew up watching Family Guy. I'm trash. Whatever. But this was so good. This was so funny. It was heartwarming at the end. So, as I said, fast paced. It is not a boring fantasy story at all. It was confusing though because there's so much to learn. They keep name dropping things and terms and we don't have a clue what it's about. All these different types of magical armour and swords. It was just a fantasy lover's dream. I absolutely ate this up. Five star. This could be one of my favourite books of the year, I think, because I just loved it that much. Like, you'd think I wouldn't have been able to read it, like, yesterday, because I also read Half a Caraval, but I just loved it so much, I just couldn't stop, and I literally was reading this till about 1am, um, but I'm so glad that I've read it, because this is so good. Oh my god, go read it, please. So I think this vlog's gonna be pretty long now, now that I extended it for yesterday, so I'm just gonna quickly go over the books that I've talked about in the vlog. So the first book I read was The Candle of Killing by Peter Swanson. I ended up giving this a 3.75, or actually upon reflection, maybe a four star, you know? Yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, comparing it to the other thrillers I've read, this was quite, this is quite good, so I think a full star for this one. I read Vox by Christina Dalcher, still unsure, loved the concept, certain parts let it down, so 3.5, I think. And Caraval, I'm giving a four star. Again, I loved the concept and some things let it down a little bit, but it was just so magical and immersive. Four star, definitely want to carry on in this series as well. And I'm also still 12 chapters into Wuthering Heights, so I'll be carrying on reading this throughout the rest of the month. So, that's my vlog, you guys. Hopefully y'all don't mind too much that last week's didn't go up, and hopefully this week's was better. Here's hoping. I hope you enjoyed nonetheless. Please like and subscribe if you care to do so, and I'll catch you in my next video slash vlog. Bye!